This is Dr. Mobin Sayed with one more episode of Long Story Short with Dr. Bean from the FLCCC platform. We'll continue our discussion about the glymphatic system and the harnessing the power of the glymphatic system through a sleeping brain. So let's look at this together. So first of all, let's start with some of the references. This is flccc.net or covid19criticalcare.com. And if you go here at the top menu, you'll see treatment protocols, medical evidence, COVID resources, education and events, news webinars, and more. This is the paper that we're talking about, the sleeping brain, harnessing the power of the glymphatic system through lifestyle choices. Omega-3 fish oils are very important. Now, we'll talk a lot about norepinephrine today. So here is something about norepinephrine. Here is the reference to locus ceruleus, which is the main producer of norepinephrine in our brain. We'll talk about that today as well. So here is a reference for that. And then there is this a little more about the locus ceruleus. This is about the brain and where the locus ceruleus is present. It is present here in the brain stem. So with these references, let's start with my drawings. So today we'll talk about the chief sleep controller role of norepinephrine in the glymphatic systems. So we have had this discussion before. I think this is the third lecture in which we are using this diagram. If you have not watched the previous lectures, my request is to go watch them where I have explained these diagrams. For a quick review, blood circulates through the arterial system and then the blood-brain barrier has a very tight control over what comes out of the blood system and enters the brain tissue. Brain tissue being here, we will call it interstitial tissue as well. The neurons are the actual brain tissue and then everything around that is the interstitial spaces. We also saw that in our previous discussion that around the blood vessels, especially capillaries, there are these perivascular spaces. They are present around all the blood vessels of the brain. These perivascular spaces are filled with cerebrospinal fluid. Then what happens is, as the blood circulates through the blood vessels, especially the arterial side, the substances are taken out of the arteries, the substances that are needed by the brain, mixed with the CSF, and that mixed fluid then gets out through specialized channels, for example, aquaporins, and we had this discussion before as well. This fluid then moves through the interstitium of the brain or the tissues of the brain. This fluid now is called interstitial fluid. Eventually, on the other side, the venous side, this fluid gets collected again, first in the perivascular spaces. Venous sides have perivascular spaces as well. Then majority of the bigger particles or amyloid betas or taus or bacteria or fungi or any such things that may be present in the brain or even inflammatory mediators, these were all will be washed away through the perivascular spaces and through the CSF. And this is the glymphatic system. The other smaller substances and molecules would re-enter the blood system through the venous end and then they would join the blood through veins. This fluid that is now being drained through the perivascular space would then be drained through the deep cervical lymph nodes and finally back in the blood system as well. And we have seen this that this fluid that is passing from here, not only it is bringing in nutrition for the brain tissue, but it is also through a convection flow moving the waste products out of the brain tissue as well. And this happens, majority of this happens during the sleeping time. 80 to 90% of this activity of cleaning these waste products happens at night. Now, during the day, what is the reason for 80 to 90% reduction in the waste product cleaning or in the cleaning or removal of beta amyloids or tau proteins or other waste products? One chief modulator is norepinephrine. So, starting from here, norepinephrine. There is a nucleus. Nucleus in the brain means collection of the neurons or cell bodies of the neuron or the brain tissue, right? The actual functional part of the brain, the neurons. Collection of neuron cell bodies are called nuclei that are present outside of the normal places where gray matter is present. Gray matter again, nuclei of the brain. So in the brain stem, there are many nuclei. One of them is locus ceruleus, called ceruleus because it looks blue. Locus ceruleus means blue spot. 
This is the chief producer of norepinephrine. Now, when the norepinephrine is present, just a very quick note on that, when the norepinephrine is present in our body or in the brain, what it does is it acts on the blood vessels and it constricts them. It is actually a substance that we use for blood vessel diameter control, which in turn is needed to control the flow and blood pressure in various organs and in our body. So now think about it with me for a second. Here is a blood vessel. We have norepinephrine. Epinephrine is going to activate the smooth muscles of the blood vessel and cause the blood vessel diameter to reduce or cause vasoconstriction. Of course, that would reduce the blood flow, right? So blood flow reduction will then in turn mean less interstitial fluid because the blood substances are taken out of the blood to produce the interstitial fluid. So less flow would mean less interstitial fluid. Less interstitial fluid will mean less clearance of the waste products. Now, norepinephrine also acts on the blood vessels of the choroid plexus. Choroid plexus are the jumbles of small capillary networks present in the roofs of our cavities in the brain or the ventricle, so lateral ventricle and the roof of the fourth ventricle. These are responsible for producing CSF. Now, when the norepinephrine is present, it causes constriction or vasoconstriction of the choroid plexus as well, which in turn causes less production of CSF. So presence of norepinephrine would not only cause reduced interstitial fluid production through the blood vascular contribution, but it would also reduce the CSF production. So the fluids in the brain will be produced less. In the same manner, if I said that norepinephrine is less in the brain, if it is less, then of course that would mean that vasodilatation would occur, more fluid would flow, blood would, would flow, which would produce more fluids, which will wash away more metabolites and glymphatic system will be upregulated. Similarly, when there is less norepinephrine, that would also mean that the choroid pluxes will have more flow through them as well. That means more CSF will be produced. That will mean more interstitial fluid will be produced. If I go back here to this diagram, the CSF plus the blood constituents, they would be mixed together to make interstitial fluid. So if there is more blood flowing through the capillaries, then that would be more substances coming out of it, more fluids coming out of it. Plus, when there is more blood is flowing through the choroid pluxes, that would produce more CSF that would be present in the perivascular spaces. So those fluids, when they combine and they pass through the brain, there will be more of those, more interstitial fluid, or we can simply say interstitial fluid volume would expand. And that extra current of interstitial fluid will wash away these waste products. So what do you think? What is good? Having more norepinephrine or less norepinephrine? Actually, we cannot generalize it because during the wakeful time, norepinephrine helps us be alert and be able to do many other functions. And it is actually good that during the wakeful hours, our brain does not become busy in cleaning itself. So that is what norepinephrine does. On the other hand, once we are sleeping, the amount of norepinephrine production through the locus ceruleus reduces. So here, wakeful hour, norepinephrine is whatever are the normal levels are produced, which causes less CSF and less fluid, which means the interstitial fluid volume reduces. So it is about 13 to 15% of the brain volume. On the other hand, at night when we are sleeping, norepinephrine levels reduce, which causes, as I said before, which causes more interstitial fluid volume to be produced because there is more blood flow plus there is more CSF production. And the interstitial fluid volume becomes 22 to 24 percent of the brain volume, which is a lot of expansion. And that extra pressure and movement of fluids through the brain tissue will wash away the waste products, for example, tau proteins, amyloids, beta amyloids, and many other waste products. So sleeping is great to allow the reduction in norepinephrine, in turn allowing the clearance. And as I said, this paper mentions that 80 to 90% of the waste product clearance occurs at night. 
you can actually connect it to our discussions with Dr. Paul Merrick and me and others that even intermittent fasting and the 14th hour helps with the autophagy as well. Then the intermittent fasting helps with the hippocampal clearance as well. And now if you top that all off with the sleep itself with less norepinephrine, there is even clearance of the waste product even more. So brain cells, so if you take these FLCCC protocol and see the advices there, if you're doing intermittent fasting and that intermittent fasting goes up to 14 hours of sleep or at at least the 14th hour of the fasting is during the sleep, that is what I meant to say, then the autophagy would occur, that would mean the inside of the neurons will be cleaned up. Inside of the hippocampal neuron, recycling will occur. And if we are sleeping well, then that would cause the interstitial fluid movement to be increased. That would cause the brain tissue overall to be cleaned as well. So not only inside of our home is cleaned, but the streets are cleaned as well. This is how important a good sleep is. Now, in this paper, I'll show you that segment of the paper. In this paper, they refer a study where what they did was, instead of actually asking the patient to go to sleep, they gave administered norepinephrine receptor blockers. These are very common used for many managements of, for example, hypertension, etc. Norepinephrine receptor blocker will not change the norepinephrine levels, but they will not allow the norepinephrine to work on all of its receptors. So essentially reduce some of its function. Now remember that we do not block the whole 100% of the substance. We normally block 2%, 3% or even lesser than that. The result was that interstitial fluid became expanded even during the wakeful hour when the norepinephrine receptors were blocked, which in turn caused more glymphatic clearance, more clearance of the metabolites, waste products, beta proteins, tau proteins, and this was synchronized with the slow wave sleep. It was associated with the slow wave sleep. So norepinephrine receptor blockers during the wakeful time or during the sleep, they synchronize with our other cleaning activities and they help improve the glymphatic system. So this is the part of the paper. Let me very quickly give you an idea. So governors of sleep, this is three to six. Although the timing and structures of sleep are controlled by both circadian rhythms and homeostatic processes, slow wave sleep, R sleep, cortisol, melatonin. However, Alongside these, slow wave oscillation, the neuromodulator norepinephrine has been found to regulate glymphatic clearance. And then they talk about the norepinephrine over here as I discussed with my drawings. So this is the discussion. What is the takeaway if a doctor, a physician would like to think about or if there are trials to think about norepinephrine receptor blockade and have a clinical setting of improving dementias? through improving lymphatic system, that is one. Secondly, for us all, just sleeping better will reduce norepinephrine. Sleeping with a good duration, with a good sleep pressure, with a good quality of the sleep, less interrupted, will allow us to have less norepinephrine, more lymphatic flow, more clearance of the waste products, and hopefully reduction in progression towards dementia and improving brain health. Thank you very much. I will talk to you again.